Kibler, Executive Director with Risha Lilienthal, Cura Curator, 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 of syllable. Collections and Exhibits. That was a syllable. <laughs> Um, so today we're delving into uh, a candy colored drink that is total indulgence, the pink squirrel. Yeah. Um, it says one of the most recognizable cocktails. Really? Pe people either know it or don't. Mm -hmm. I suppose that's true for most things. Yeah. You either know it or you don't. But I have um, mentioned this to several folk and they don't know what a pink squirrel is. Huh. Now... I first tasted a pink squirrel when I was probably eight or nine years old. <laughs> um, the old mill in Austin. Okay. Um, and when my sister would come from California with her daughters who were my age, um, we would go to the old mill for dinner. And afterwards we would order one pink squirrel, one brally, brandy Alexander, and one grasshopper. We've done all but the pink squirrel. And it would rotate the table and everybody Aww. get a little taste, including the kids. Now, we only got one little taste. Oh, sure. But everybody else then finished them off. That's fun. That it was, was a one nice of the tradition. few times I ever saw my mother have a cocktail. Mm -hmm. My mother was not a drinker. Um, this is one of, like, my grandma's go-to. That's what you said. Mm -hmm. grandma, mm -hmm. And where does grandma enjoy her pink? At the VFW in Hutchinson, City, Minnesota. I actually remember I know some friends that go to that VFW. Yeah. yeah. Um, so anyway, it's also considered one of the most eye-catching cocktails, which I can see. It's very pretty. Um, it is a, really an adult milkshake. Uh, originally made with ice cream. Well, I've seen it two ways. Heavy cream. Um, originally made with ice cream and then they switched it to heavy cream. But at one, t one other article I saw said it was made with heavy cream and the ice cream came later. But in 1941... Bryant Sharp of Bryant's Cocktail Lounge in Milwaukee created the cocktail. Wisconsin. Wisconsin. It's a, it's a supper club drink. Okay. They're known for their supper clubs. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and it says here that his original recipe called for ice cream um, rather than cream. And they believe it started as a milkshake spiked with spirits prior to the repeal of Prohibition. Which makes no sense when because it says he 40. developed it in 1941. So there's some, some folk didn't check their facts mm -hmm. when they were writing about the pink squirrel. Mm -hmm. So I'm wondering if it started with cream and they added the ice cream in 41. Maybe. I don't know. Um, but we got ice cream. Yes, we do. And cream. We're going to do two separate. We're going to do it two ways. We're going to do one with cream and one with ice cream. Who gets the better one? I get to pick first, I guess. I don't know. Isn't that how? I'm thinking we can sample them. But we should... <laughs> anyway. You, you <laughs> see how I pour. <laughs> I do see how you pour. Well, we have to do two separate. Okay. Because ice cream and cream. And ice cream's going to have to go through the blender, which probably doesn't need ice in the ice cream one. I'd have to reread my recipe here. So, we're going to mix this up. Okay. How? Uh, super easy. It's super easy. And I do want to point out one of the things it says is you should chill your glasses. And uh, Mr. Lundgren, we chilled our glasses this time. <laughs> um, so for a single serving, it's equal parts creme de noe. De no you. De no you. De no, de no. De, de no you. De no. De no you. Creme de no. You. Do know you? Do know you? <laughs> <laughs> Abbott and Costello here. <laughs> um, white creme de cacao and uh, one and a half ounces of heavy cream. Um, and everything was chilled beforehand. So even yes. I even chilled the, the liqueurs. So how many? One? So we are going to do uh, three quarters ounce of the creme de know you. Oh my gosh, I have to eyeball measure here. You should be able to figure three quarter. Probably could have done half ounce and then half of the half ounce. Just saying. Just one of one of that. Okay. And then you're gonna do same thing. Three quarters of that. Okay, so I'll do the one and then the one. Oh, okay. And then you're going to do one and a half of these of the heavy cream. 
Oh, it got sticky. Is that one that's a cork? Is it? I, I think moving your feet. No. Probably. It helps. Wow, there that really got sticky hard. under there. That crazy crumb to cacao. One and a half of those. I did. One ounce and a half ounce. You just did. I thought that was that. Oh yeah, you're right. <laughs> I thought you were pouring cream. I'm sorry. I'm like, what, what is she doing? You did, yeah, right, right. Now one and a half. One and a half of those. Yes, I did. <laughs> no, and a half. And a half. And then, and then you shake that nicely. Oh, nicely. Well, shake it however you want, I guess. Give it a really good shake and carefully strain. How's that? Yeah, shake it away from the clothing. I have popped the top on this before. And I'm going to start the frozen one here. Doesn't really say how much ice cream, though. Okay, how... Then strain it. And then strain it into one of the glasses. Smells good. Not a very big drink, is it? It's not as nice. pinky. No, I would have anticipated it pinker also. So I'm going to try to estimate what a ounce and a half of ice cream looks like. That too much? No, never too much. Ice cream. And then you top it off with a little sprinkle of nutmeg. Ooh. And pardon me while I step away and mix this. Okay. Maybe. Oh, and did back. It? Well, and back. <laughs> that did not mix the greatest. Look at that. Ooh, but it'll melt. That's kind of gross. Well, it looks a little past due. <laughs> but it's a, it's more pink than yours. Yes, Isn't that is. interesting? Well, that didn't melt. It mixed. True, but there's only a little bit that didn't mix. Actually smells very nice. All right, which one do you want to taste? You can have your pick. You better pick quick or I'm going to pick. Ice cream in it. <laughs> okay, cheers. cheers. This has cream in it, so. Oh, yeah. That's really good. Mm. Gosh, I haven't had one of those in probably since I was eight. <laughs> mm. you no, know, probably since I was 12. Um, I do, I, I do like the idea, though, of a thicker one, but that didn't, this is not an ice cream mixer. Clearly. Did you want to try? No, no, I'm good. I'm good with this. Um, so when we were starting to do this, mm -hmm. we were having a difficult time finding the creme de, de noyau. You. Yeah. Uh, not de noir. No. De noyau. And not de no not. not de no <laughs> so that, that word. Um, and it says, and so something said you could substitute amaretto. Oh. But, then uh, but it would have been pink. Yeah, it but been pink. Um, I'm looking, when I did a little research on this today, it said you absolutely need this. The, no, you. No, you. Okay. To make a pink squirrel. Don't even think about a substitute, as it won't work. Well, and that's one of the reasons why the pink squirrel isn't as popular as it used to be. Very hard to find. Because that's, yeah, not right. as readily available. So I thought this was um, interesting and it explains why it tastes so yummy. It's made with the kernels of apricots, peaches, or cherries, which give it an almond-like flavor. Mm. So it's made with the pits. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that's nice. Mm -hmm. I like that. like that too. Yeah. Um, it tastes a little like amaretto, but it's, it's definitely more almond flavored. Mm -hmm. Very almondy. Yep. Um, here it says it costs about 15 to $20 for the lower quality 
and about $40 for the higher quality, uh, more like $47. Oh. Yeah, so it is pricey, but when you look at what you make, if you do like a pink squirrel, you're gonna get a lot of pink squirrels out oh, of yeah. that. So, it looks good. Uh, it said, one of the questions was, is it worth buying? Well, only if you want to make a pink squirrel. <laughs> um, you can make it to, you can use it to make a cocktail called Old Etonian, um, but there aren't really popular cocktails at all that use it. And I did not look up what an Old Etonian was, uh, but that's an interesting one I might have to check out too for yeah. later down the road. Yeah, cool. So you wanna talk, I've got a little bit more on Bryant's Cocktail Lounge, but that's really related to um, Wisconsin. Would you like to showcase what you've got here? Yes. So here we have some of our collection items. Uh, this one is a kind of pink, it's listed as a prom dress in our accession book. So it's a pink formal gown and the darker parts here, and I don't know, you can't really see the cuff too well at the bottom here. The darker parts are velvet. And this is a very polyester dress, like static cling to the max. Poly. Um, and so it's likely late 60s, early 70s. And it was owned by a lady named Jacqueline or Jackie Joan Jensen. Jackie Joan Jensen. Jackie Joan Jensen. Sounds like Skippy Skippy John Jones. Ha! A little bit. Do you know who Skippy John Jones is? No. He's a chihuahua. Oh, that's it's a fun. children's book. I didn't read it. Uh, <laughs> I could write a book on Jackie John Jones. Jackie Jackie Joan, Joan Jensen. Jensen. <laughs> yes. Uh, she was 97 when she passed in 2020. So wow. very recently. Yeah. And she was born in 1923, a lifelong resident of Freeborn County. And I should say too, uh, we're gonna be releasing some kind of clothing collection videos. And this is one that has been done. So you can see some close-ups on it, some of the kind of ruffles in there as I talk a little bit more about them. Kind of a, um, a short clip, yep, like a two to five clip. minute, mm -hmm. here's our collections yeah. feature. Yeah, great. Uh, in 1946, she married a guy named Ralph, who he was in the army and then moved to rural Albert Lee where they did farming. And she oh. was a she was a farmer wife, uh, homemaker and mother is how she's listed in her obituary. Oh. And uh, she volunteered at senior resources, at Red Cross, at public health clinic and food distribution wow. and Lutheran social services. So she was very involved. Clark's Grove was her childhood place, home where she moved to after her husband died in 1977. And uh, her obituary lists her as loving to watch uh, game show, game, like shows mm -hmm. and twins baseball games. Oh, she was a twins fan. Yeah. Her husband owned the Jensen Repair Shop that, Jensen Repair Service, I'm sorry, that was at 1137 South Broadway. That's where the Martin Cycling and Fitness Store is, kind of really close to Hardee's over there. And in 1969, they ran an ad at the end of it, it said, 1137 South Broadway, the home of two lonesome shiny pumps on the south side of Albert Lee. I thought that was cute. cute. Yeah. So I do have a question. Okay. Because they were married when? 46. And this is a prom dress from? Probably the 70s. So whose prom dress is it? It is either hers or her child's. Well, it can't be we hers. No. It can't be. Well, it, it was listed as a prom dress or formal dress. Oh, okay. So it could have been used in Maybe a, a mother's. Setting. It could even be a mother's. Like mother of the bride? Mother of the bride. Yeah, dress, right. Okay. So we don't know what event it was used when for. When was her daughter born? I don't know that. I can't oh. answer that. I don't know. That would be more digging. That would have to be done. Um, let me see if I can. I'm just wondering, wondering if it was her daughter's prom dress. She did have a daughter named Vicky. Who would have been probably in the 60s, mm -hmm. a teenager. So, yeah, so it could have been her prom dress. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Very true. And we have some photos of the wedding from 46 
and it's kind of interesting because you have the nice formal one where they're in their group photo and everybody's straight faced <laughs> straight faced and then you have some candid photos where you see these bright smiles oh, it's it's i love that so i wonder why know. they were so straight faced aren't you oh, supposed to smile the, in your that was a style you know you just before you could just take candid photos easily where you just snapped yeah but a in shot. the 40s you should be able to have snapped a shot right but maybe they were easily. kind of traditional in like a thing. formal sense where it was like this is just how we stand because you know you had to stand this is just what you looked like there was no reason to why, why to are smile. you smiling this is just this is just how you look Dress here, it's adorable. It's kind of hard to see this little flower detail. It's almost like a video. little tulip that's got a little, yeah, a little pink leaf instead of mm -hmm. green leaf. It's under. really cute, and we have a matching light blue one in collections as well. Uh, this one belonged to Clara Deardle Bagason. Bagason? Bagason? I'm not really sure how you really say it. Cute, little buttons. Yeah. Uh, and uh, we have the the Bogusons have given us a lot of information on their family here in Freeborn County. They have an entire genealogy book that lists people like mm. fifteen hundred people that are all related to one original mm -hmm. ancestor. It's really neat. It's really enjoyable to see and um, kind of go through that those lines. Uh, so Arthur Nikolai Bogason and Clara Deardle got married in 1912, and they were born in Freeborn County and lived in Albert Lee for most of their married life. Hmm. Uh, so Arthur was a farm implement dealer for all Alice Chalmer in the 1920s. Oh. So we have a 1937 tractor, Alice Chalmer, Alice Chalmer. and uh, he then operated a portable saw machine and went into individual farms to cut down trees and make boards from them. I wonder how I wonder how common a portable saw machine was. I don't know, in the in the thirties. In the thirties, yeah. Well, in the twenties. Um, and he also operated a threshing machine going farm to farm oh. and helping uh, with harvest. And this is sad. On Memorial Day in 1930, he was fatally injured in a wood oh. sawing accident. Oh. So he passed in 1930. So they weren't married for very long. Mm -hmm. And uh, Clara, who this was donated from her family, she attended Luther Academy in Albert Lee and taught rural school in Riceland School District. Huh. She was an organist at East Freeborn Lutheran Church. And so this was, I'm, I'm thinking this is a 40s, 50s kind of dress. Um, for children as mm -hmm. I'm looking at it and that's the age her grandchildren sure. would have been children so sure. and yes. I'm guessing there were maybe two granddaughters mm -hmm. since there's one blue one pink and um, it was donated in her memory by two of her grandchildren oh her granddaughter so it might have been yeah, it might have been the two okay well, that's yeah. sweet that's sweet yeah that's a, that's a favorite it's adorable yeah oh, nice yeah, that's what I got on them um, I had forgotten that to do this, I was going to grab some of our hands-on hats because we've got a ton of um, fun, fun hats that hat. are pink. Mm -hmm, we do. Yeah. Another one. I wore one in um, our derby kind of did you? cocktail I, which that Which one did. did you wear again? I don't remember. It was pink and it had like flowers all along okay. the sides. It had like little curly pigtails. I was thinking of the pink one with the fur. And oh! The, the, and the ribbon. The fluffy one? Yeah. That one's fun. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it is. Come and see our exhibit and you can try on some of our hats. Yeah. All right. Cheers. Cheers.